Hi guys and great that you are starting a new video, we are in Bremen and I would like to introduce you to a very special person, even if I have not met him myself yet, it is the good Buland Oster, kebab master from Bremen, he has a kebab shop here, I saw the wheel and it completely won me over, his mission is to become famous, not only does he have a great kebab, I saw that in this video too, but he wants to be famous, that is his only most important mission, much more important than money, much more important than anything else, and yes, watch the video yourself, and we have to test this kebab, my ambition is, I want to have a well known name, so Buland's Oster, right? So Bulin's kebab. I would have thought so, hey, it's in a supermarket, in a supermarket, where treasures are hidden. So, it has to be a treasure. I saw what kind of meat is used for the meat, what dedication the man has and that can only be great. I think this is the entrance. E, why am I wandering around in a vest? I'm stupid. There he is, look at that. Hey, that really doesn't look like anything, but those are the treasures. Those are the treasures. Oh, he pushed his way to the front, my dear. I was already there. There's Boer. That's the man, he has Lobigo. There's the skewer. It looks awesome. It looks awesome. Look up here again. Nice shot. Look, you can do that with my face too. Hall 2161.4. So before I introduce you to Bull, we have to film the kebab skewer here. He says the roast pepper was made yesterday. Normally the rib here is from a young bull. Marbled meat. You always pay attention to that, right? Selecting the meat. Are you always at the wholesale market or where do you always get your meat? From Hanover. Hanover. Yes. Look at this beauty. Prime rib from a young Ben. Beautifully marbled meat, he says. I also love telling stories about people when they really make such a mission their life's work and, like others, dedicate their lives to research or whatever. I don't know. Maybe, for example, and he devotes his life to the art of kebabs. Bullent USA. Boo has already given me something here. The meat has its own special character. Very special. So folks, I have the good Bullent here now. Bullent, I have just told you. I found out about you from the internet. I found what you have to say very impressive and I think you are such an interesting person and of course I am very interested in your kebabs. So, you as a person would of course not be enough. Tell me, you say your greatest wish is to become famous. How did this wish come from you? To be honest, because I wanted to do that 20 years ago. I tried everything at home too, everything. And then I worked normally at Bosch. The thing's like a castle and then after 20 years it closed down, they moved to Hungary. That meant that we were out. Then I told my wife I want to do this job. Then I said, okay. Then I looked everywhere. Then we found this and I want to have the best. I swore I want to do the best because money is not an issue because that comes later, but I want to have the best because if people pay something you have to do something good in return. That means you want to become famous and of course the kebab gets reach, that a kebab. Yes, that is my goal because I am almost 50 years old and I don't know for sure whether I will love it until tomorrow. You can't give no guarantees. No, no, of course not. No, because that is, I am a Muslim. That's why I always say if you sell something, sell something properly. I won't sell anything I don't eat myself. Exactly, I saw that in the video. Ghoul Intendant Uster. That's a name everyone should know. That's how you said it, right? That comes from my son. Yes, that comes from my son. Cool, nice. Okay, so I'll say we're going to test the kebab. I you also make the bread and, er, both the durum and the kebab bread yourself. It could be that I'll test both at once. First I'll take a durum and then I'll take a normal kebab. Okay, really break it up, yes. The really big problem with these self-em kebabs is the risk of tendon damage. I can keep saying to you that a tendon damage is no problem. The problem is when it's so bad that you can't eat the kebab or it becomes difficult. But a tendon damage can happen now and then, but it's a huge risk with self M kebabs. There's cucumber in it too, but it works with the kebab. The sauce, nice and smooth yogurt. Cucumber comes right through. You have a lot of spicy powder. That gives a lot of heat. At the end this lovely warm meat comes through. That is the order of the taste. The risk of gristle is much higher with young bulls, horses and older animals. Animals are simply much more developed and it is much harder to get the soul out of them than with calves. 
Bread is great, but this bread, people, has a nice, doughy finish. If the bread sits for 10 minutes, it's over. You have to take the bread home fresh and eat it, like a few kebabs, that warms my heart again, a little move, you know, all this powder that he made. With a maker like that, I just have to say that there's no danger, it wasn't just like that, I've never tried it before. He's played the game, he knows what it tastes like. He knows how much powder to put on it to achieve a certain result. You have a present spiciness here. It's in the room the whole time. Pleasant, not too much. This chili sounds like, after I've eaten it, you always have little, isolated flavor packages. In this case, cucumber. Cucumber comes through easily, comes to the surface, disappears again. Peter's comes next, disappears again, and throughout there is this lovely, delicious meat that keeps coming through. I've rarely eaten such warm, comforting meat. In contrast to the hearty, warm, comforting meat that was so present, it keeps coming in and fighting its way through this spicy powder and the other ingredients. So juicy, you definitely don't need any sauce here. What a high rib is so much fun. You know, I've been in the game for a long time too. High rib is a meat. Generally speaking, if you do it like Bullent does, that you work it so cleanly, there is of course the risk that the taste will vary slightly. You can't standardize a product like this 100%, because every animal tastes different. You have a different butcher every day and their tastes are different. What's nice about the high one is that you always have good quality goods with a cozy, warm basic taste. As I described, this cozy, warm taste and this basic taste is always present in a good raw rib. It's always there, it resonates and it just has this character. You eat it, you don't really know what tastes so great, but it just tastes great. You want more, it's just addictive. And then, if you're lucky and get that smell, you've got that real meaty touch, where it's really intensely meaty, but it's just fun to eat. In this case, the cucumber is also really good, probably chopped through one of those things, just grated through, last bites for me, then it's off to the kebab. I'll tell you one thing, a powerful statement. So in my eyes you're a doer, there are also people who spend a lot of time on it, just like you. The thing just doesn't taste good and that's a statement, a really strong thing, and I would really like to try a kebab now. I feel like a little duck that comes running up to you, you give it a bit of food, you know? Yes, give me some more. Is it your wife and daughter here with you in the shop? Yes, this is my wife and my KO, a great family team. They are the best teams, guys. The cut alone is very important, if you don't cut all the way through, guys, you're just left with this bread at the bottom and then the meat is missing, everything gets deducted straight away. Wow, that smells really fresh, look at how fine poured it is, guys nice and fine poured. I have a comparison with her, a skewer that doesn't have any phosphate in it, a comparison to a normal skewer where you have, I don't know, I estimate 15% cooking loss or something, because with one like that you can have 30 to 40% cooking loss. It just feels like money wasted. One reason why a kebab has to cost more than a normal kebab. Phosphate binds the water and it doesn't come out as easily as here. Without phosphate you have more cooking loss. Do you always put meat on top of everything? Okay, very good. Now I'm curious, hey. It's pretty neat. Suspicious of a camera bonus, but I've said 10 times, please don't. But of course I can't guarantee anything. Bread is like a pillow, bite into it and it swells up again. Bread tickles your palate much more easily than bread. Then it goes into the onion and parsley. It's very easy to get meat, but first of all it has this fresh bite. Of course it always depends on where you bite into it. Logical. I've just had an intense roast for the first time. The roasting of the meat was really great and at the end there was that pleasantly warm, sweet meat. Cucumber is a risky thing here. Over there you were just different. Cucumber takes you off your path. You want to get into the meat. You feel this roasting, you follow it. You feel yourself in. You want more of it. Cucumber comes, pull yourself out a bit. It's great, you have to be in the mood for it that day, but it depends on your focus. It wasn't quite like that with the Durham, but here it is a bit distracting.
the meat is so tender, so great, remember that when you order a high rib or have a kebab somewhere that has high rib, it's often with high rib, as the fat runs down and collects down here, theoretically, of course, it's the same with any meat, with top ribs it's extreme, you get the following phenomenon up top, you notice the meat, it's delicious, it's good, but this intense, meaty, hearty taste only comes down below, where the fat mixes, where it catalyzes, where it makes it even more fun, and down here, you've bitten into the little meat, I just bitten into that too, meat, a beautiful explosion of meat, ah, it was already the final level, it gets insane down there. Guys, this taste of fat, this taste of meat, it mixes. It gets so intense and it doesn't stop. You stay in it, you lose yourself in this taste of meat. It's phenomenal. Really insane down here. It's filling. It's so damn full, guys. It's one of those things down here. It's a bit breadier here, but it doesn't bother you. It's awesome. You just have this awesome bready dough feeling. Announcement of the kebab. Huh, this guy is awesome, we're going to evaluate it. So guys, you've also eaten just now, even a plate and a kebab, right? And, your conclusion, what would you say? First from Bremen, I'd say. Well, I'd say out of 10 points, he definitely deserves 9 points. That's, very realistic, very realistic. So I thank you for your feedback and have a nice trip to Bochum. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you too. Boo, first of all, thank you for your hospitality for the kebab. I always have to think about what score I should give after the kebab and here's what I'm going to do. After this shoot, I'll definitely do another undercover shoot with you. If you're okay with doing a comparison with a camera and without a camera too, no matter how it turns out, I have to be tough. So currently you're number one in the north. There's no getting around that. I've eaten all the top class dishes. I have eaten them all and it is an absolute statement of what you have achieved. You get 9.1 points from me for this kebab. The only criticism is that there is debate about the cucumber in the Duran kebab. I thought it was very good, but everyone has to make up their own minds. I think there is a lot of potential to get meat from seas now. I had one or two bites and they were a bit difficult, but I didn't have any tendons. I would say in terms of the firmness of the bite. I have eaten kebabs straight from the rib before. They went down even tenderer. They had more meat in them. So there was less danger of you thinking, oh crap, if I bite into two or three pieces at the same time so for all of you who are testing it we will go past under the cover again that is the real test but one statement it was a dream a dream really right up there with the top in germany how tall are you then how tall are you guys remember to give it a thumbs up then i changed my mind we're actually going undercover right away my undercover agent is already back here getting the kebab out when the kebab is ready he'll call me I'm sprinting to the entrance and we're going to test it straight away. Yes, screw the second video, guys. I don't want to keep you in suspense. We're going to do the undercover test straight away. It has to be done. You'll see me in a minute with the kebab in my hand. Oh, now it's full sprint here. Even undercover agent number two, but he already knows him. So I have to get another undercover agent. Now we're going. Now we're going. We're going straight into the corner here. Oh, there he is. There. Oh, oh, I'm not even allowed to show him. Now we're going to compare it with the camera and without the optics. Wow, that one is thick. It feels even thicker than mine, but that finesse is there. My last time. That's what I wanted to say. Bulland, he's just coming here now. He's probably fighting outside. We just had to go behind the sign so the test isn't disturbed. It's really like that, folks. It's really like that. And I hate to say it a mile away. And it seems like a different kebab to me. Without going into detail. First of all I'll tell you exactly what I mean by that. First of all, if you compare it to a normal standard kebab, it's still a much better kebab than probably 49 out of 50, still much better. So if you look in the north, for example, I've eaten all the top class ones. I've tested all the ones that are well known and have any potential, and this was, I don't want to say miles ahead. It was absolutely number one here in the whole district. It was sick. I thought about this kebab afterwards too. It was abnormal for a good kebab to be here now. I can taste the amazing self-made bread. I can stand by that. Everything is great. But so far I've been missing this meat, this kick, this juiciness, this mouthfeel. Wow, that's not there yet. I still have to go into it further. What I said in the main article when I was in there with a the camera, this high rib factor. You eat it, it's awesome. It tastes awesome. Sometimes you don't know exactly why, but this full-bodiedness, it's just an experience. You still have that here. It's awesome. But the factor that made the whole thing so extraordinary, this complex, sweet, awesome and yet intense meat taste, can't keep up. It can't keep up. I can't tell you why. Especially recently, because that's what's important and relevant to you. How does the kebab come without a camera? I've taken it even more seriously recently. And that's why this is the benchmark here. And again for those who don't understand some of the ratings, I'm not mixing things up. Last time it was like this, this time it was like that. I'm taking an average. No, for me it's just this undercover. Just this undercover.
try a nice peppery taste, which I didn't. Notice last time. In that sense, we'll see each other when we evaluate it. Jen, hello, my dear. Is everything okay with you? Yes, you took the undercover test today and of course I'm happy to give you feedback, even though we already have you here. So what I said, this kebab is still stronger than other kebabs, right? It really is a fun thing. But that magic moment that I had last time, it doesn't quite have that. My colleague also said, I'll show you right away. Right? Because the meat doesn't always come. I noticed that this morning too. Fat is missing. When we dry it out. Have you prepared any more of the meat stick without it? I have. I'll show you right away. Shall we show it? Come on, let's go in then. Well, I can only tell you one thing. I'm in the game a lot. Let's call it that. It's actually true. Meat is a natural product. It can happen that sometimes I don't want to support him, right? Everyone should form their own opinion about what they think about it. But of course meat can sometimes be a little less marbled and then you're just out of luck, as you can't save it. You can add some fat, but the meat has less marbling and every animal is different. Of course it's great when you have a supplier who always delivers the same quality, but not everyone does. Ah, in comparison, Vulent even has his normal goods and the goods that he had for this skewer. Look, these are the parts from the previous delivery that are marbled and you then mix them with the normal pieces, so that it doesn't have this piece, because there isn't as much fat. This is his normal quality, I'll say in terms of the marbling, and now you can see that he doesn't want to cut it up. This is what she got now. Much less fat, right? You can see that it is much less marble. I hope you are not disappointed. Now you know what I gave you last time? You saw the reason. Bulent didn't say no. I couldn't give more than 8.2 points this time. It was still a very tasty kebab and, as I said, stronger than almost all the other kebabs that are standard on the market. But it was nowhere near as good as the result you got last time. But still, I can only commend you all. Try this kebab on a normal day. It really tears things apart. You'll still be reasonably happy. I'll be honest. If you come one day, I can imagine you'll even say you give it 9.7. Yeah. Right? Because as I told you, they're always fat. Yes. That plays a big role, which is a shame. I was happy about the 9.1, but thumbs up anyway. Thanks. Guys, watch the end of the video. Just a final word from me. The bull is already gone. He's just a nice, good, nice man and I'm sorry that I have to downgrade. But please always remember that if I'm not honest about something like that, then these videos are useless and then I don't need to make these videos anymore. Then we as a community have to decide that I'm going to do something else. But yes, I have to be honest. Have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see each other again today. Thursday on Sunday at 10 a.m. for the next video. There's a great battle between Vern Zier and Ferdy, the final boss duel. Wow, wild. Kiss goes out. Have a lovely day.